Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. Bear with me while I try to plug my phone in. I just got the low battery notification. Bad timing, bad timing. All right, so I have successfully just finished recording a short video on this sheath system. And uh, in case you guys aren't aware, I'm going to be attempting to do short and long videos on a lot of sheath systems so that if you guys want to nerd out with me on a 20 minute video, you can do that. Or you can just get the kind of super speed, the speed run uh, version of it and get all the bullet points. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to watch a long video, which I completely sympathize with and understand. And a lot of you guys do like to stick around and check out all the, the intricate details and smaller, finer points. So let's get into those. Sorry, I'm having some issues with my cord tugging my camera and makes it want to fall over. All right. So this sheet system comes to me, um, or th these knives rather, come to me from a customer named Troy, who has sent me, well this is my El Chete, but he sent me his Spartan Blades Harsi Model 2. This is an absolutely legendary knife, and I'm going to just throw it out there right up front guys. If you have a Spartan Blades fixed blade that you might be willing to part with, whether sale or trade, reach out to me. I'm super interested in working out a deal and getting my hands on one. Um, and in particular, if you've got a model, a Harsey model two or model one, even, um, I would be just chomping at the bit to make something work out between us. So I really, really want one of these things. This is in my top two or three favorite knives I have ever handled. It's just an absolutely amazing, amazing knife. And of course it would have to be one that's just extremely rare because Harsey, uh, or uh, Spartan rather, only produced a finite number of them, then discontinued it with no intentions on uh, making more. And uh, so what's out there is just what's going to ever be out there. And uh, yeah, they're really, really quite special. So if you have one or if you have a line on one, definitely let me know. I would love to get one. So that said, uh, if it's not a Spartan, if you've got a Benchmade, a Tops, an SE, or whatever, you might be willing to part with or sell or trade. Uh, definitely reach out. Don't be shy about making me some kind of offer or uh, just starting the dialogue and we can work that out. If you have done one of these trades with me before, vouch for me down in the comment section so that people understand I'm not unreasonable. I'm not lowballing. I won't, I won't try to lowball you. I want you to be very happy and comfortable with the price and I want me to be very happy with what I'm getting out of it and what I'm giving you for it. So um, yeah, we, we can work all that out, but I'm always willing to entertain that conversation, whether it's an open L or a bark river, I don't really care. I'm always looking to expand the collection. Essentially what it does is it allows me to pattern sheets without the customer having to send their knife to me in most instances. So, uh, obviously you can see the benefit there and I'm also a blade addict. So, you know, I got to feel the addiction, but let's take a look at this thing. So large knife, we have an El Chete from tops this thing is an excellent chopper guys it's probably in my top two or three favorite choppers um and that spans across everything from budget to high end everything that i've experienced and handled known um, this thing is right up there it is an amazing amazing tool that said i personally don't feel all that much excuse me all that much control with it so i have a hard time using it for any other tasks um, but if you guys, I think, you know, if I spend enough time with it, I could probably even feather stick with it. I'm sure there's some videos of people doing that. You could definitely baton with it. Um, but chopping is obviously it's forte. So, uh, just throwing it out there. If you guys need a chopper, I would definitely look at the El Chete. It has a great click going into this sheet, a very springy draw. I would definitely classify that as a ballistic one-handed draw. And I love that click going back in. Um, the Spartan here has a little bit more resistance on the draw because of the shape of the handle up here. I had some choices to make as far as design for how to construct this, um, but what I ultimately decided was it's better to have a little more resistance and be a, uh, you know, there is a trick that you can use to make it really easy to draw. So I'm gonna teach you the trick right now. Obviously this is for Troy, but anybody else that might be ordering something similar, just know anytime something like this is necessary, I always try to show it in the video so that there's no uh, misconception or confusion about it. Basically, this little upsweep on the handle scales is what causes the resistance. A lot of times, knives will have handle scales that stay straight while just the blade stock has an upsweep. Uh, something like the K-Bar, Becker, BK7, or BK9, where you have just the blade stock thumb ramp versus this, which has handle scales to match that blade stock. 
Um, with that, it obviously can't draw straight out or it's going to run into this collapse section here. And the reason I chose not to leave this open is because that would actually make the retention really weak. If I left this open, there'd be a lot of rattle potentially, and it wouldn't take a whole lot to get the knife to come out. So I decided to go with a little bit more of a rugged draw. Now what you can do to get a little more torque on it and to make the draw feel very easy is push your hand up into it as if you were actually going to be wielding the knife. What I mean is um, as it sits in the sheath, I want you to feel like you've got your forefinger all the way up into this forward choil so that you are going to be gripping the knife as you would be using it. Um, put your hand as far up as you can. <clears throat> And then using the bottom of that middle knuckle on your thumb, push off at the thumb ramp. I don't know what it is, maybe the angle, maybe the uh, amount of torque that you get being up that high. Whatever it is, the knife comes right out. It's a very smooth draw. That said, because there's so much of your hand making contact with it, you're not going to feel it wanting to like spring out like a ballistic draw. It's just going to be a very smooth and easy draw. So that's essentially the trick. Going back into the sheet, there's also a trick. Um, basically because of that upsweep again, you obviously can't put it straight in at the direction it would need to go at the height it needs to go. Cause it's, it's just going to bottom out like that. So you got to have the blade, just let the blade drop naturally low and then drop the handle down a little bit and push. It'll guide itself home. So once you learn the trick, this is actually quite easy to use and very comfortable. So, uh, I see no issue there. All right, looking at uh, the carry setups on this. So the overall sheath system has three slash four carry setups. Uh, first off, we've got this pair of Molly locks here. These are made by a company called Blade Tech. They also make the Tech Lock, uh, which is the most famous of their creations, I believe. Um, so these, you can just kind of open them up and uh, weave them into Molly webbing. Because there are two of them, spaced at an inch and a half, you're going to go through two separate um, horizontal rows, but it's going to go through three vertical rows of webbing. So you've got six loops that you'll be attached through, making this a very strong setup. Um, very easy to use, very versatile, very rugged. So you can attach to a vest or a pack. I obviously wouldn't recommend a vest, but you can do any kind of molly attachment with this. Second setup we have here is a leather dangler he asked for dark browns that's what's on there it's got the american flag as well as my logo stamped into both sides of that there i think that looks really nice and the colors look really nice together as well and then troy didn't ask for it but i added it for him i put a leg strap down here at the bottom um troy you're probably going to need to adjust that. i have no idea what size your legs are i uh, just kind of threw it together so you can adjust it when you do, I would recommend leaving the short length of it as is. Just leave that alone. Go over to the longer side of it and adjust the length uh, to whatever you need over here. And uh, if you don't like the leg strap, I won't be offended at all, brother. I just wanted to leave that on there as an option for you. So what you want to do, fastest way to remove it, if you want to take it off, is just use your Phillips head screwdriver and take the D-ring along the cutting edge of the El Chete. Just take that D-ring right off and then the loop of webbing here closest to the D-ring on top, just undo the webbing and unthread it from the D-ring. This D-ring does need to stay in place for the Baldrick system, which is the next thing I wanna show you. But anyway, the reason I added the leg strap is because when you have a really heavy sheath, a really heavy sheath um, hanging from your belt, it has a tendency to wanna to swing and you're gonna feel that on your hip. It's gonna to wanna to pull your hip forward or backward, which I just personally don't like the feeling of. You're also going to have the issue of a lot of weight pulling down at one point of your belt. Adding this leg strap, surprisingly, if you put it a little bit tight, it will mitigate quite a bit of the weight and it will also stabilize and eliminate most of that swing. So I personally really prefer to have a leg strap if I've got a long or heavy sheath system hanging from my belt. So personal preference, but this was a pretty expensive build. So I wanted to throw this on there for him for free as just a complimentary uh complimentary feature to that dangler so dangler with a leg strap makes a drop leg rig that's what that's called all right getting over to the um the baldrick sling here this is a really incredible sling uh beach and tactical jacob peterson preppers bunker outdoors 
He makes the best Baldrick slings in the world. I would challenge anybody to, to show me a nicer sling than this. One that's more functional, more comfortable, more practical. And uh, honestly, the price is really great on these two. So um, everything about this I love. And uh, Jacob is just a great guy and a skilled craftsman. Another combat veteran from the Army. So I love doing business with him. Baldrick Carry, guys, very underrated. And it's my favorite. You guys have been following me for a while. You know already I absolutely love Baldrick Carry. It is, in my opinion, the most versatile and the most comfortable way to carry anything that's a large or a heavy system. Um, basically, it just means a two-point sling attached to your sheath. You can do the attach points together. I've seen some that just, you know, both attach right up at the top, and so it hangs vertically. And I've seen others that are like so, where you can, uh, this is, probably the more quintessential Baldrick carry. You've got one at the end of the sheath and one at the front of the sheath. And uh, you carry it under your non-dominant arm, handles forward, blade edge down, so you can just kind of cross draw when you need your stuff. <clears throat> the reasons I love Baldrick, number one, because it bears the weight very comfortably on your shoulder. Number two, because it doesn't require a belt. So if you're uh, like me, when you go camping, Half the time, you know, in the hot weather, I'll just take uh, I'll take the pants, throw them in the tent, and throw on some athletic shorts um, so I can just feel more comfortable out in the hot uh, weather. And then being able to still go out into the woods, maybe hike, whatever, without a belt on and having my sheath system so I still can have my knives on me, that is invaluable. I absolutely love Baldrick for that reason. Last reason I love it is because uh, when you have... Um, hot weather and you want to wear a no shirt you can have a baldric system when you have cold weather and you want to wear a winter parka you can have a baldric system when you want to throw a rucksack on and do a long hike you can have a baldric system it works with a lot of different scenarios clothing other gear you can have your belt loaded up with other stuff and still have a baldric system you see where i'm getting at this is uh it's just a really versatile and comfortable option so guys highly highly recommend if you have a large or heavy sheath system, um, whether it's uh, something you already own or something you want me to build you, I would highly recommend you consider Baldrick. All right, now that I've beaten a dead horse that <laughs> long enough, let's get uh, a little further down the road. For attachments, we have an Olight M2R Warrior Pro. I have the I have the peasant version here. It's a great flashlight. It has several different brightness settings on it. You can double click to go directly to your brightest. You can triple click for a strobe. You can use the tail cap for bright, the super bright or strobe. It's just a really great flashlight. I think the pro version is just a more lumens and better battery life, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a slightly different size. Um, it's a little bit bigger. So there's that. <clears throat> Next we have, oh, actually, also, the reason I position this the way I do is so that when you're carrying with Baldrick, you've got a flashlight that's right here. You can click the light on, and it's a hands-free. You've just got light shining out in front of you. Obviously, you can position the sheath as needed, or you can remove the light. You can steer it manually with your sheath. Um, but you guys can see the versatility, utility in that. Next, we have an Uberleben, half-inch by five-inch, I believe, ferro rod. I've got some shock cord tied on there so that once you've whittled the rod down, the shock cord will help retain it in its holder so it's not just going to fall out on you. Down here at the bottom, we have a Sunto Clipper Compass. This is a great compass, especially for the price point. Only $15 or $20, somewhere in that, in that ballpark usually. And it's very accurate, very reliable. I would challenge anybody to find a better compass than this for the price. Sunto makes incredible gear and... Um, the reason I love the clipper so much, not only because it's reliable and accurate, but because it does have that little clipper plate on it. So what I do is I make a floated plate and then I use the clipper and slip it under there. The plate, whoops, just dropped it. The plate kind of pins it in place so it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to fall out or move on you. As you can see, I'm going to just kind of put it in there <clears throat> loosey goosey. So. You can move it with force, but it doesn't want to just move around on you. It's in there. It's locked in place. And then a modification that a customer did to uh, a plate that I had made. Well, so I made him a sheath system for his Benchmade Saddle Mountain Skinner, a customer named Harrison. So if you're watching this, Harrison, 
Another shout out for you, brother. I really appreciate this mod. It's really changed the game. Um, so he got his sheath and I hadn't been drilling the holes in the plate. So he drilled a hole in it, making the compass sit into it just a little bit better. And now it really locks in place. It sits flush against the plate and locks in place. Such a simple thing. I can't believe I overlooked, but Harrison squared me away and added that little, uh, added that little modification. So these are really secure in place. I love the Cento Clipper compass. That's the best possible compass, in my opinion, to attach to a sheath. All right, now getting into the two knives, the modularity of this, you can separate these two knives by way of the Tech Lock, uh, sorry, not the Tech Lock, Blade Tech, the company that makes the Tech Lock, makes this thing called the TMMS system. If you buy a TMMS or Tactical Modular Mounting System, it's going to come with two receivers and a fork. Obviously, you plug the fork into whichever receiver you want, meaning you can just mount the receivers wherever you want to mount them, and you've got a platform to carry whatever you have the fork installed on. In this case, we've got one receiver on the big sheath, and we have another, oops, another receiver on the floor now. Hold on, guys. Let me grab that for you. Sorry about that, guys. Hulking out, just throwing stuff around. The other receiver is mounted to a tech lock. So what Troy's going to do is wear the tech lock on the belt and be able to instantaneously and without the use of any kind of tools, move his Spartan Blades Harsey Model 2 sheath from the El Chete in a piggybacked configuration to carrying it on his belt. I think that's a really, really cool option. It allows for a lot of versatility and modularity. And <clears throat> when I set these up, I make them so that you can carry it horizontal, vertical, or canted at a couple of different angles for a comfortable cross draw. So you can go roughly that angle and roughly that angle. Um, so your tech lock's going to be able to do that. <sighs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> so that's, I think, about all I've got to show you on, on that. Um, one quick note. I invented this thing called the breakaway piggyback system a few years ago and the whole purpose behind it was to be able to quickly separate your two knives carry them independently from one another and um, whatever carry setup you choose for the smaller knife is going to kind of dictate the type of adapter that i use to connect the two sheets it's going to heavily dictate how the two sheets are actually connected if you want to carry on a tech lock there are really only two options that i can think of that are going to work smoothly. Number one, the TMMS, as you're seeing right here. And number two, a product that I invented called the Universal Tech Lock Adapter. What the UTA does is it allows you to actually plug the Tech Lock itself into the adapter. So you would mount the adapter to a large sheath, have a Tech Lock on a smaller sheath, and you just plug the Tech Lock into that adapter. Um, so that creates a couple of pros and cons that you want to think about if you're trying to choose which one you want. I'll tell you up front, I recommend the Blade Tech TMMS over my Universal Tech Lock adapter. And here's why. The UTA is going to give you a slightly lower profile carry when it's on your belt. But in every other aspect, I think the TMMS is the better choice because it's lower profile when coupled to the other sheath. Whereas the UTA is going to put it about a quarter inch further away from the big sheath. So, you know, that's one thing to think about. The other thing is that with uh, injection molded plastic versus the Kydex that I used to build the UTA, it's a little bit more rugged and rigid. So this is going to, I think, is going to be a more stable feeling platform than the UTA. And then the last thing, I think probably the, uh, the real advantage to buying a TMMS or multiple TMMSs is that you do get multiple receivers with each. So if you bought two TMMS systems, you would have four receivers and two forks, which means you can move two different pieces of gear, whatever you have your forks installed on, between four different platforms. So I think that's an extremely versatile thing. You could have one in your um, on your sheath, another on a tech lock on your belt. You could have another on the dash of your car. You could have it on your nightstand, whatever you want to do. Um, there's a lot of really great places to uh, stash a knife or have a platform where you could mount it. So that's just food for thought. The TMMS is an extraordinarily versatile uh, option. And I would recommend it for, for anybody who's thinking about coupling your knives and having a tech lock carry option for it. 
Um, that said, uh, it'll also work with things like the the dots combat loop. So if you don't want specifically the tech lock, we can make it work with some other things. Um, last thing I'll tell you about this system is that it is ambidextrous. The one component that is not ambidextrous on it is the leather dangler, just because um, I wasn't able to get it to go on this side of the sheath here on the handle. So what you're looking at is only a right-handed dangler carry, but every other aspect of this sheath can carry ambidextrous. So uh, you do have that option. Uh, and just because Kydex has a shiny side and a patterned side or a matte side, um, the plate for the compass, you'd be looking at the shiny side if you just shuffled that plate over to the opposite side. So I actually made a plate to fit the opposite side if you ever do decide to uh, convert this to a left-handed sheath, Troy. All right, guys, that is all I've got for you. Once again, if you have anything that you want to sell or trade for knives, I'm always looking to build my collection up, but especially if you've got a Spartan and especially if it's a Harsey Model 1 or 2, um, man, I am chomping at the bit to get my hands on one. So let me know, guys. Definitely uh, just send me an email or call me or shoot me a text or something like that. Um, and we'll work something out. All right, guys, let me know what you think of all this gear. Let me know what you think of these two knives. Let me know what you think of a double sheath versus a single layer sheath. Let me know what you think of Baldrick Carry and all the other goodies that you see on here. Really appreciate you guys sticking around and nerd out with me. <clears throat> Once again, I am doing short and long videos for most of these sheath systems. So if you want the short speed run version, I've got the link in the description box down below. Um, I guess it doesn't do you much good now since you've sat through 22 minutes. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave that gaff in there. I'm not going to edit that out. That's just funny. I'm an idiot. All right, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe. Stick around for the next one. God bless.